We're going to go ahead and look at problem 84 on page 134 in section 2.1. I want to read the problem. A Norman window is constructed by adjoining a semicircle to the top of an ordinary rectangular window. The perimeter of the window is 16 feet. A. Write the area A of the window as a function of X. And what dimensions will produce a window of maximum area? Okay, so let's go ahead and understand that for this problem our job is to write an area function and it tells us that the perimeter is 16 feet. Now if we look at the perimeter we're talking about if I start here at the lower right hand corner the perimeter is all the way the outside of the figure. So in this case the perimeter is going to take a leg of the, the part of the window on the side here we can call that the leg then it's going to talk about the semicircle, the other leg, and finally the base. So let's go ahead and write a perimeter equation. Now we know the perimeter, which is equal to 16 feet, okay, is going to be, oh, looks like my little P got off the screen. So let's bring that P on the screen there. There we are. So the perimeter is 16 feet and we can see it's made up of a number of segments and I think let's look at the perimeter of this semicircle we commonly call the perimeter of a circle a circumference but the perimeter of this part let's call um, call this whatever let's just make an expression here to represent its length it's going to be one half of the circumference well since the whole circumference would be 2 pi r, and we take half of 2 pi r, it's going to be 2 pi r, which in this case is x over 2, and we're going to take half of that. Okay, so if we simplify this expression, we'll find that in terms of x, this 2 will cancel with this 2, and we're just left with pi x over 2, and that's how long that is. So Let's take the 16 feet, and we know the 16 feet now is made up of that semicircle, which is pi x over 2. We have two y's here, one then this side and the other side, plus 2y. And then finally we have an x, plus x. Okay, so there we have it. Pi x over 2 plus 2y plus x. Now the other equation that we're going to have now is area. So the area of this figure, the rectangular part is easy, that's y times x. And then we're going to add the area of the semicircle, which would be what pi r squared all over 2. So we're going to go pi, and we're going to put our r in, which is x over 2. And we're going to square that. But since we have a semicircle, we're going to have the 2 in the denominator. Now, our problem really asks us, if we really go back to saying what we are being asked, is we're looking to find area as a sole function of x. That is what we're looking for. So I think what would be prudent is to take a look at this first equation, and if we want to, we can get rid of this y in this equation, then make it a sole function, area of function of x, by substituting what we get here for y and then putting that into the area equation. So let's do that first. So I think what we'll do is we'll say 2y is equal to 16 minus pi x over 2 minus x. And then finally we'll say y is equal to 16 minus pi over x, pi x over 2, sorry minus x and I'm gonna write it like this I'm gonna multiply both sides by one half I'm gonna distribute the one half now and I'm gonna get one half of 16 is 8 one half of this next term is going to be minus pi x over 4 minus x over 2 so I'm gonna now have an expression here that I could substitute in for y in my main equation so finally what I'll get now is uh, I'll give myself some more room down um, uh, 
here and just say area now as the sole function of x is equal to um, this expression that we just wrote 8 minus pi x over 4 minus x over 2 and then we have times x and then we say plus let's go ahead maybe and simplify this up we'll simplify this up in our work so this is pi x squared over 4 all over 2 which we could write that as pi x squared over 8 so uh, we'll pretend the inside of our window now is our work zone and in any work we want to do we could just do there if we want to so we've simplified that term to be pi x squared over 8 now this thing here is not necessarily written in a fashion to where you could see all the terms but let's examine this is a quadratic term and if I distribute the X here and here we could see we have quadratic terms in fact we could put this pi X over 4 in terms of 2 pi X over 8 and we could actually see we have some like terms going on here and I, I, I'm not as concerned about that the problem did ask me to write the area as a window as a function of x. I did that. I'm going to do this now as I'm going to put this equation as it is in the calculator, okay? And then we'll pick it up from there. Okay, we're back here. What I did was I put that equation into the calculator and I use our newfound brace in the beginning and uh, that's what I have there is what I have in the calculator. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a standard window and you can see uh, my graph starts to appear and it doesn't tell me a whole lot because what I really need to concentrate now is what is my domain now the domain of this problem what we can see in the zoom window is at least it goes up and comes down so there's some maximum up here that we can't see now in this particular problem we know that this dimension here all the way around is 16 feet so if you can imagine that if we used half of it here and we use at least half of it here our realistic domain could be no more than 8 for X because you'd use 8 here and 8 here and we notice semicircles gonna use a lot more than 8 but there's no sense in trying to be exact on this we just want to start out with 8 so if we go to the window and we say X is from 0 to 8 uh, that'll be a good start and we know we don't care about our negative area so uh, well, let's just plot to see what happens so again we know we're missing the top and uh, here it's coming down in fact there we just see the touches of the graph so let's go ahead and um, maybe fiddle with this a little more and we don't need the negative that's wasted space so let's get rid of the y um, at negative 10 and let's just make negative 2 so we can see the axis and I think instead of 10 let's just do 20 and that's now the output remember the output is square feet of our um, of our window so um, we'll go ahead and graph that one and let's see what happens okay we've now seen the maximum so let's use the power of our calculator to find the maximum we know that these are one units okay so somewhere at two is to the left of my max and two four six eight I think um, we're out here let's see two four six eight is at the end so we'll just do seven okay so here's how I'm gonna do this so I'm gonna go second calc maximum and my left bound I'll just put two and I just wanna go with the number I don't wanna I don't wanna hit this back and forth that's a waste of time mo case in most cases so my right bound I'm just gonna put seven and I'm gonna be okay with that now you notice there's seven and I'm gonna click one time that's all you don't need to get all the way in cursor all the way to the top don't do that waste the time hit enter for the guess and there I have I have a maximum now at 4.48 feet okay so when X is equal to 4.48 and my area then will be at 4.48 I will get a maximum area of my window at 17.92 feet squared so remember that's what our equation give us our equation gives us the area 
and we'll get a maximum of that at 4.48. So hopefully this has been helpful with this problem. Good luck.